I just came back from a run. You know, it's December 9th and it is 57 degrees at 10 o'clock. Last week it was in the 20s. So the, the in-laws are here for, they, they came in last night and they're gonna be here today. They're coming to see like a concert in Nashville and they came in earlier just to one, they wouldn't be tired for the concert and then two, just to kinda get some family time in. Not completely sure what we're doing today. I do know they went to Chick-fil-A and they're picking me something up to, to bring home. So I'm, I'm okay with that, honestly. Do you have anything you'd like to say, Blue? I know Max is loving the extra attention, right? Yeah. All right, I gotta go take a shower. So I got this comment on YouTube today and it was a, uh, it's something that I really needed to, to hear. I don't know this person at all. And I honestly think, I don't know how he found my channel. I think he just stumbled across it, but his comment, let me explain. So when you're, you're making content, especially content that has to do with like you as the subject matter and your life or, or whatever, or your opinions, it could be anything. But as long as you're making content and you're the subject, there's always this part in your brain that basically never shuts up and it literally, it always just like questions everything that you're doing, like is, is this stuff good enough? It's a completely self-inflicted pressure, but the pressure is, is definitely there. And if you're brave enough to put your, your stuff on the internet, uh, where people are notoriously mean just because they can hide behind a screen and, and everything else, you have to have a pretty thick skin to, uh, to continue to, to put out content. I had them get me a large, unsweet tea. I've recently figured out that I have a sugar problem, so sugar's not an easy thing to kick. Hopefully this will kind of help. It honestly probably won't, because it's not sugar, it's just nasty, unsweet. So I'm editing this video, and I'm having to, to gain up a, a microphone, because it was just, it was super quiet, like the audio is super quiet. I'm having to gain it up like 30 dB. I had to gain this guy up 30 dB. And this microphone's a, a digital microphone, it's a digital interface. There's zero noise floor. Like if I gained it up 30 dB and then heavily compressed it, which is what I'm doing right now, with like any other microphone, like that's using like a little jack, there would be, it would be so noisy. And if you don't know what noise is, it sounds like That's crazy. We're picking some, some Christmas presents up at uh, Best Buy. So this is the comment. I'm gonna not say the, some of the, the words. Bro, what the, your editing is top tier and your talent is insane. How the, are you not blowing up? I love it when people are nice on the internet just because there's, there's not enough niceness like going around. It has nothing to do with the compliment. Like I'm flattered, thank you very much. But I'm more pumped on just Tim being just a nice person. Like doesn't know me at all. And this, he's just complimenting. Like I love that. Not enough of that. Also, these are like a bunch of just random dishwashers and appliances that are just, just sitting there. I lost Savannah, I'm trying to find her. If I had to guess, she's gonna be somewhere in the video game section. Yep, there she is. I think in life, especially with creative things, if you can be supportive of somebody else making things, that's, that just puts you in a really, really good light. And I think honestly, it kind of makes you more hireable. Thinking about what Nick said yesterday, like being a good hang and like being able to embrace somebody's like idea and create off of that, the, the, the root of all of that is being supportive of somebody. I think that's why I like the comments so much. Anytime that I'm working somebody creatively, whether that be a session, a video, or a shoot, or just anything like that, I try to be really, really enthusiastic and really, um, really supportive of their idea. It, and it's not to be like fake, it's more just to encourage collaboration, and, and collaboration only comes through support. So that's, that's why. We're looking for a new tree. And honestly, from my experience, I think that 
any shortcomings that you may have, like you may not be the best player or you may not have like the best setup, but if you can be supportive, that's going to that's going to put you above somebody that may have a better setup or maybe can play a little bit better. A lot of people say if you're not good at like if you're not good at the hang, then you're not going to get any work, and that's true. And part of the hang is being supportive of other people's work. They're just shopping, and I'm a. Uh... I found a seat. I'm gonna go see if they're ready to go. Oh, check this out. It's a table with built in built-in seats. payment now we're in dirt cheap whenever we have people come in from from out of town savannah like this is her one spot she wants to show them <laughs> i feel like i've spent more time at dirt cheap in the last like seven days than i have anywhere else in any retail store all month I think for me, the way that I don't, the way I avoid like or make sure that I'm not like just saying like nice things just to, to come off nice and to just get business and making it like genuine and making like my comments and stuff actually contribute to the project instead of like just being fluff is I find things that I, I really like resonate with and think things that I really hone hone into. That's what I kind of fixate on. Instead of like just looking at the project as a whole, like I may not like like a certain piece of the project or it may not resonate with me, but if I can find a small piece and build from there, that's how I ensure that I'm not like just saying nice things just to, yeah. So I have something I need to tell you. I didn't include it in yesterday's vlog, mostly because I was, I was kind of embarrassed. After Nick left yesterday and we like finished the session and I went down to, to edit and like quantize the drums and stuff, I, uh, I finished editing the song and then I exported it and I sent it to him. That bass is super distracting, can you hear that? Something just told me like, just check the tracks, like put them in a new Pro Tools session and just make sure that they're all good. I did that and I was, uh, I sent him tracks that were wrong. So what I ended up having to do was I had to re-export re and change a couple of settings to make sure that the tracks were like lined up correctly. Just super embarrassing, like I'd sent him the, the tracks and he, he even said like, oh wow, that was super fast, thanks. And I had to send back, hang on, that was wrong. Just embarrassing. So it's, it's five o'clock right now, and I just realized that we're flying out to Charleston tomorrow morning at, at 9 a.m. And I haven't packed or anything, which is like, which is the norm. I just, normally I'm pretty good at remembering when we're, we're traveling. So before I go in, I figured uh, this parking lot seemed like an appropriate spot to answer some questions and comments. Love the setup, man. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that don't know this video, uh, I was talking about my cymbal setup and I, I love it too. Nice groove, bro. Thanks, I appreciate it. A lot of my short videos, actually, I'm just making it up as I go along, so. <laughs> Half the time when people say nice groove, I have no idea what groove. I have to go back and listen to see what groove they're talking about. Can we get some quick throwback covers? Honestly, I thought about doing that, like just doing like old school songs that I grew up playing and I grew up like listening to. I think it'd be fun. Fun fact, the first song that I ever recorded or the first drum cover I ever recorded with my drum teacher years and years ago was Yellow by Coldplay. The second one was Say It Ain't So by Weezer. If anybody like wants to, like, if a beginner ever wants to start recording something, Yellow, or those are the two songs that I always point them to because they're easy, but they're fun. Playing at too many churches could leave you at a risk of being here. Yeah, honestly, so the video that he's talking about, it, it was a comment or a question that I got from Instagram basically asking like how this guy, 
This guy wants to know how to like play at churches in his area, not to like grow his career or to like make more money, but just to connect with other people. And uh, I basically was talking about how to do that in a healthy way that you're not putting your own personal like wants and needs ahead of what ultimately the church needs. Well said, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I never know if I should respond to those, but it's just, they're fun, you know. Love this video. I have a large vision. Do you have any tips on tuning your bass drum and what heads do you use? Yeah, so, uh, so that video I was talking about how I can make an 18 inch kick drum sound close to a 22 inch kick drum just by tuning it. And what I typically do for heads is for the, the batter side where the beater's hitting, I'll do like one or two rotations of the drum key. And then on the rezzo head or the side that has the hole in it, I'll just finger tighten and that's it. And the idea is to have as much air and as much like movement of that rezzo head as, as you can get so that the maximum amount of air is hitting the diaphragm of the, the kick drum microphone. As far as heads, I typically use dual ply and that, that's, that's basically it. Anything that's like dual ply for a kick drum head is, is good for me. Honestly, for all my heads on my drum set, anything that's dual ply that doesn't have a ton of muffling is good because I wanna, I wanna be able to control how much muffling goes on to the d drum. Okay, I think uh, I'm gonna go find Savannah now. All right, Savannah and her family went to, uh, well, it's just her mom and her sister, but they went to a concert in downtown Nashville. I honestly don't even know who they're, they're going to see. It's some band that Savannah's younger sister likes, so. When they asked if I wanted to go, I, I, I politely opted out. In the beginning of this video, I talked about a super nice comment that somebody like left on my, my channel, and I kind of talked about how, it basically, it's just, it's great when people admire somebody else's art and are, are encouraging to like the creator who made the art. Taking myself completely out of the equation, like it, it's awesome to see like somebody else admire someone else's work and let them know about that. Especially on the internet when there's so much negativity there and it's really easy to be, to be negative. I really admire people that just are nice on there because it is definitely much harder to, to be nice compared to, to being mean. And I don't think that it's any like coincidence that when you are when you show an artist that you're, you're for them and you're rooting for them, even if you don't play any kind of part in their, their art or their craft or whatever, I, th I don't think it's any coincidence that a lot of times that'll come back around in the form of opportunities. Mostly just because people wanna work with people that are like-minded and I know when I'm looking for people to work with or I, I do work with people, and it's like the first time doing it. If we if we have like common things or they're just, they're there to like serve or, or to help me with whatever I need to do, I'm so appreciative of that. And the chances of me calling them back are, are vastly larger than if I'm sitting there like having to basically just almost encourage them to, to help me out. I'm not saying that that person's intentions are, are that or anything like that. It's just whenever you're working for somebody, especially an artist or, or somebody like that, it's really important to really let them know that you're behind their project 110%. I once had somebody tell me something that completely changed the way that I looked at the, the music industry and honestly, it changed my entire outlook on the way I look at the world and, and life. I'm not gonna quote it word for word, but basically they said, be people's biggest cheerleaders and celebrate their wins with them. Don't, don't envy their wins or don't wish that they could be yours embrace, love, and celebrate their their hard work and their achievements. And if you do that, your life is going to be more, more fulfilled, more happy, and you're just going to have better friendships. And that's so, that's, that's so true, so true. Especially in a creative field or in a world that we're all just seeing other people's achievements and, and accomplishments on, on the internet, like social media and stuff like that. And because it's so widely publicized, I feel like it's, it's even harder to, to cheer people on and to not to not be envious of them and to not wish that that was you. Now, I'm not saying just to only like celebrate other people and kind of sacrifice yourself to, to help other people. Definitely have your own goals and use use other people's like accomplishments and stuff to encourage you to, to 
reach your goals and to reach your aspirations, not in an envious way, but a self-motivated way. Do it for you, not for what other people will, will see ultimately on, on Instagram or, or whatever, whatever. That's personally why I've kind of stopped posting on my social medias a lot besides YouTube. Mostly just because I feel like I got the sense that I was I was doing it solely for other people to congratulate me and ultimately give myself validation and to kind of show people like, see, I can do this too. And the more I started thinking about it, I was, I was seeking that that, that was my goal instead of just getting work done that satisfies myself. So that's kind of why I've, I've kind of pulled back on social media posting. Not saying that you have to do that or anybody else has to do that. Just for my own mental state and my own happiness, I just stopped posting on those those platforms for that reason. Now I just post when when I when I want to and when I'm I'm happy to. And honestly, when I when I do post, I'll post it and I'll just close the app immediately and not even really look at if people are responding to it or what are, what people are actually saying or, or anything like that. And because of that, I think I'm I'm happier and I'm more more fulfilled. So, all right, I have to edit yesterday's vlog. Now we were shopping all day, which is fine, totally fine. But because of that, it is a uh, it's seven o'clock and I have yet to start my my edit. It's gonna be a good one too, it, 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 and it, I don't want to give too much away, but I had before, I did a session yesterday, and before the session started, I had issues with these drums, and they were they were just giving me so many, a, a bunch of issues, and it took a good minute to, to figure it out, but eventually I did figure it out, and it was, the, what was causing it was super, super weird. All that to be said, I, I'm excited to edit it, because I think it'll be a really good, good vlog. If you haven't checked it out yet, I'll put it somewhere, somewhere up there. I also have to pack too, because we're leaving tomorrow, so I got a lot of stuff to do.